Hey, what's up guys? Footy Manager TV here, and this is my second episode of my Chelsea simulation career, and also on just how it's going to work. I will probably only make three episodes per season, one like before the season or after the season with the transfers and that, and just preview of the season or review of the season to see where I come, where I finish, what competitions I win or don't win, that kind of thing, which players leave, which players improve, and then there's the January transfer window like this. I'll make this one a bit longer where I simulate through the January transfer window, showing who I get in, who I sell, who I get in from youth and that kind of thing. Simming the matches so you can see I'm simming them. And yeah, just g simulating through m not the whole January as you see where like the 8th, 9th, 10th uh, of January right now. But the most of January, yeah, just so you see how I go through the career so you know how I'm doing it, basically. So here's our youth squad right now. We have a couple good prospects, but as we get into the second season, we're going to have even more. And for this series, I wanted to do it because my other careers, as you realize, it's hard to see the development of youth because I'm it's struggling. It takes so long to get through a season. So that's why I wanted to show this one, how players develop, which players develop well. I'll also go into search for players that like people request so like say if you request for whatever play you want I'll uh, whichever players uh, people comment about I'll definitely in the next video I'll search for them and then you can see uh, their improvements because I definitely want to make these videos like helpful to people as well as well as entertaining so this is basically the U squad right now it's pretty thin but as the season goes on at the end of the season we're gonna have it's basically a full list and a lot of them are gonna be future players for us and we've got a match coming soon against Stoke City. But we've got uh, setting up another network for the scouts uh, to scout England. He's a five-star, five-star scout from England. You can't really get better than that. As you know, they have a better chance of finding good players from their home country, which is really good. And here, um, I keep getting a lot of offers, but I'm not doing. I'm not going to accept any international just for the point of this series. And then Everton pulled out of negotiations with Branislav Ivanovic. But here's a little squad report right here. Bern Leno. He's 20 years old. 82 overall. And also, I'll be doing these squad reports as well very often. Like in January and end of the season. As you can see, by his superb performances right there. Overall, he had an 8 average, I think. Or close to that. It went too quick. But anyway, moving on. As Pilacueta. He's 79 overall. He's improved plus three, which is very interesting to see um, just halfway through the season. So, and he was a bit older one, but he still has a lot of room to grow. So, you, but the only thing about him, he doesn't have enough pace. He really, for a fullback, he's really slow. But anyway, here's Varane. Uh, yeah, like as Pilacueta, like I said, he grows a lot. Varane, he grows a lot as well. Branislav Ivanovic, he does well. But I tried to sell him as well because he's getting a bit older and he will start decreasing. Like his value is not going to increase. Uh, David Alaba signed him a left back. He's very pacey. But also, also he can play like defensive midfield, center mid, left mid as well. So he's very versatile. Bought him for $15 million from Bay, M Bay and Munich, obviously. So uh, he's been a regular player for us. John Obi McCall, 81 overall. He's increased as well. As you see, he increases in attributes he needs for his position as a defensive midfielder. Uh, and his performances haven't been too bad. He's actually scored quite a few, not like, he scored a few goals for a defensive mid. And then Ramirez, he's even increasing quite a bit as well. And he comes into a beast for career mode just because of his stamina. He makes himself available for every single match. Like his fitness is hardly ever low because of that fact. 95 stamina. He can play so much more than any other player. Then Eden Hazard, 87 overall. He's gone up plus two. He's going to keep increasing. He's going to be one of my best players in the future. And he's one of my best players already. And he's just going to keep growing with this team. As you'll see, as the seasons go by, I'll be like trying to sign similar players, like players like under in between. Like they're still a good. Not I'm not going to be signing bad players. Like have they have good potential, but they're only like 60 or 70. I'm going to be signing players that maybe like 20, 22, um, to, yeah, 21, 22, something like that. Like Al Sharari straight away. Look at the goal scoring record right there in the Premier League. 14 goals out of 19 games. Improved, fantastic, but really, uh, Neymar, he's the one who's going to be at the team. Like I said, I'll sell Al Sharari for some amazing profits. And Neymar, he's going to be the number one striker until he wants to leave. Jadson, the defensive mid I signed when he was 18 at the start of the season, he's improved by two, so it shows he, do he can grow. 
So if you want to be interested in signing him, you can only sign him for like only 4 million, which is really cheap. So if you're like a lower prem team, he could be a good signing. David Louise, he still increases very well. Once again, if you have him, I wouldn't sell him. He's a very good defensive mid. And obviously, you know, David Louise is a beast in FIFA. But next up, a really interesting one, Marco Marine. As you can see, he improves seven on two attributes, but only on a few attributes he's improved. So that's a bit interesting to see. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe, yeah, I think, I'm not sure if it's just random how they grow or EA sets like certain positions, which attributes to grow or something like that. Because no other attributes have grown and some other players, they grow on almost, almost every attribute. So not sure about that. But anyway, moving on to Frank Lampard. He's obviously going down just because of his age and really even into the next season, I'm not going to play him like hardly. So he's just going to keep do going down, but he is going to retire in the next season. And I want that because when you when there's like a key player and they retire, it doesn't happen before every player, but like the best players in the teams, um, when they retire, you get a youth player. Basically, they're them, just basically with a different name at 16. I think they're 18 or 17. I don't know. Maybe it's a bit different um, for different players. But, uh, yeah, they basically come back regenerated with their potential, which is very good. Fernando Torres, only 83 overall. Um, in my opinion, he should be at least 85. But, yeah, he only had one bad season, and people think he's not as good anymore. But I still think he should be at least 85. A very good striker, a very good finish, and he's good dribbling and stuff like that. Gary Cahill, will probably try and sell him, got, not good enough, and 27 as well. Then we just got some reserve players here uh, that really probably don't even matter too much as they won't be part of the future. Um, maybe Romu as a defensive midfield, but I don't know. It just really depends how he improves, but I'm not playing him, so that probably hurts his developing chances. As you can see, Oscar, he's been injured, so haven't really had a chance to play him too much. Got injured early in the season. As you see, he played six matches in the Premier League, then got injured, as you can see, with some attributes going down. But then, uh, a couple seasons in, he starts to grow uh, with no injury troubles, which is good to see. I actually get big offers for him, but I kept him knowing he has good potential with that. Then Demba Ba, he's someone in the game who hardly ever grows. I'll sell him into the next season. Victor Moses, as you can see there, uh, three matches, three goals. You'll probably wonder why I don't play him more. He actually got the three goals in one match, but the rest two matches he done nothing. But he's improving well as well. A couple goalkeepers that I'm going to get rid of. John Terry, just going to leave him till he gets retired as well. Imagine how good he's regen play. He re his regenerated player, I should say. Yeah, he's a regenerated player. Should be good. Then Thibaut Courtois. We're going to have him and Burn Leno. So I will look to sell Courtois in January of the following season. So then we've got Kevin De Bruyne. He'll make an impact into the second season while he's on loan at Werder Bremen. So he's going to come back a really good player. Josh McCurker and him as well. Lucas Piers on. So we've got heaps of these young midfielders. Todd Kane, probably not going to be good enough. Nathan Aki, he's someone who increases heaps while being on loan. So if you beat Chelsea, I advise you to send him out on loan. And he improves heaps. And probably ready for the team in the third season when he gets above 70 overall. And next up, to see how I show you to go through the game. So I do actually show, I do go through them. I don't like save before the match and then quit. Uh, so to cheat to win every match, I just play through it. Because honestly, I don't really care if I win or lose. The point is, I just want to see how players develop. That's pretty much... Um, it's almost like scouting for my other careers, pretty much. Like seeing which players grow and stuff like that more than anything. And obviously for other people to see as well. So I thought if I might as well was playing this. I was going to do this anyway. If But I know I left some comments. Uh, people want to see this kind of thing going into the future. And I, I always do it anyway. I even had another career like this. But obviously... I recorded this one, so hopefully you enjoy it. As you can see, we picked up a 2-1 win there with Jean Mata and Al Sharari, who cannot stop scoring. He's actually going to fit... Oh, I'll wait to the next video to show you who wins the goal scoring, who gets the most goals in the league. But I can tell you, it is one of our players. But anyway, um, there you can see the ladder. We have not lost. And like I said, it's not like I cheat. I don't like save before the matches, then quit and then go back in because that'll take forever. Like, and I really can't be stuffed. I don't really care. Like, even if I don't make Champions League with this, um, because obviously with Chelsea's, Chelsea's quality, uh, I am going to win most matches anyway, but I'm surprised I haven't lost yet just due to the lack of simulating. Sometimes you get some losses like you'll see in the next season because I'm just simulating. As you can see, Al Sharari, he's dominating the goal scorers. It looks uh, the goal scoring. It looks like no one can catch him. Neymar has got 10. He may come back late in the season, uh, but really, no one really looks like catching Stefan Al Sharari right now. 
he just cannot stop scoring. Um, it maybe I don't think if you're actually playing the matches, he'll score that much, but who knows? He starts at 82 with only 19 he is at the start of the game. That is so young. He, like I said in the other video, he's one year younger than Neymar and just a couple overalls less. So it'll be interesting. And like I said, I will sell him for a big profit, but I will go through in other episodes to see how much he grows at the team he goes to. Here's another scout report. Uh, we got from our Argentinian scout, uh, Scouting Argentina. So we got a couple future prospects here. Fernando Castro signing him up. Esteban Navarro, I don't think he's good enough. Max maximum potential up to 83, but very low minimum. Um, Rodrigo Marquez, then there's Javier Marquez. Um, he has potential. Jose Vargas, probably not. Not going to sign up the rest here because they're not good enough, as you can see. Uh, some I reject and some I just leave to get scouted more as I can, if I think like the scout can get a better report in the next update. Uh, as you can see, approaching for a lot of international jobs, but I don't really want that. I'm getting approached a lot, like I said, and really we're dominating the league so far. And really each season our team's just going to get better, so I would expect to win the season or yeah, win the league every single season because my squad just keeps improving. We sign big players every year because of the profit we make. We have the money to sign really big players. But I never really sign anyone over 26. But here I'm going to get some offers for Cesar as Pilar Cueta. Um, he improves well, but I don't know. He's not really good enough in my opinion. Uh, his form is okay, even though it says it's good. He hasn't been doing fantastic. And when I get some better defenders in next season, I move to 3-5-2. Uh, and then really there's no place for him as a right back. So then I try and sell him. I think he goes in January in the start of the season. Up until then, I just leave him in the reserves. Uh, yeah, because I'm not playing a right back and he can't really play any other position. So I just leave that. And here we've got a game against Arsenal coming up. You know, they're actually pretty good in career mode because, yeah, they've got a pretty solid team. Some good young players that improve. Obviously, Walcott, those kind of players. Arteta, Wilshere grows a lot. Um, they come back with a 10 million offer. I'm not sure why I didn't accept that because then I offered 15 and then I didn't think they accept. I probably should have offered that. But at that stage... Um, Aspilo Cueta was doing pretty good as right back, but obviously at that stage, I didn't know I was going to change formation with a big signing of a really big center back who actually moved to one of the top teams in this league. And then I stole them from him. He's probably He develops into the best defender in the game. Doesn't start at the best, but develops into that. And now we're starting to get offers for Al Sharari. He isn't going to leave yet, but actually the reason I sold him, I did want to keep him, but he wanted to leave. And that's basically random by the game and you can't really control it. When a player really wants to leave for sure, you can't really do anything about it. So the next match we have is against Arsenal. So that's probably going to be a tough one. Like I said, they are one of the better teams in the league. And Wigan, they do really want a max to spend $10 million. As you know, Wigan don't have too much money. So I was kind of stretching it a bit there. But uh, you always want to get as much money as you can. Especially in this career, the point of it. I really... Uh, in when I get through 15 seasons, I may try and reach like a really amazing target of like a um, like a million dollars, but I de or a billion I should say, um, or who knows? I have to, I just like to get as much as I can. Who knows? Anyway, moving on from that, and our next match at home against Chelsea. We've got two home matches in a row, so hopefully we can pick up some more wins. But you know, it's really hard with the sim matches against the better teams. And you take a look at our team here. Everyone is fit. So I'll probably just go with that team. Look how good the team is overall. It's just going to keep growing as the matches go by. So hopefully we can get a result. I'm not sure what I'm doing here anyway. Um, simulate the match. Like I said, they've got a couple injuries. Let's see. That will tell them the re result. Obviously, it's with the updated team. So they got Monreal. And it was a draw. Not too um, like disappointed with that. As like I said, it's hard to get results against the best teams. And yeah, like I said, I basically get the, all the wins against the easier teams, and sometimes I get draws against other teams. And now, 17.5 million offer for Torres. I was almost thinking to accept that, but um, Torres was actually doing well for me. He was scoring so much, especially in the Champions League, so I didn't want to keep... I did actually want to keep him for the Champions League matches because it was in form in that competition, and I want to do well in Champions League, obviously, but look at that league dominance right now. 12 points in front of Man United... So we really should hold on. We might have to... We would get... Well, look at here. 91.5 million for Torres and they accept. So in my opinion, uh, that is a really good deal to get that much for him. So I may look to get another striker now. 
And it'll be interesting to see what happens with the striker that we get. But you just got to wait for that. We've got a match against Wigan. Then a game against Man City in the FA Cup. So hopefully can do well in the FA Cup as well. Because um, I definitely want to win the FA Cup. That is a good competition to win. If you can win that Champions League and Premier League, you're doing good. As you can see, United, they're saying Carlos Fierro. He's a very good young player um, for Mexico. So, as you see here, we've got some fitness going down on some players. Then I like to rotate, but if it's not like too down, I just keep it how it is. Uh, it, also, it depends who I'm playing, if I want to get a win or not. But I saw I was just playing against Wigan, so I thought I might as well get some young players in. Gave Neymar a rest. Give Torres a rest, because I thought... Torres, he's going to leave. So I sort of will play him for the last match. And if his fitness goes down, doesn't matter because he's not going to be in the team for the next match. It's kind of a, a like a good thing to do, I guess, because he's gonna his fitness will go down, but we don't need him for the next match against Man City. So uh, that's kind of a smart thing to do if, that, if you're ever in that situation. But leave some comments if you enjoy these longer ones, seeing how I simulate through the transfer window, see me getting offers uh, all throughout the January transfer window, or if you want it a bit shorter... I can make it a bit shorter, but I thought it may be a bit interesting seeing me go through simulating these matches and getting offers and like negotiating with them, um, it being unedited, edited, I should say. Um, anyway, a nice win there, 2-0. Fernando Torres score, um, scores in his last game, very good. He done a very good uh, job for the team while he was here scoring in important matches. So, um, Azpilicueta, as I thought, it was too much for Wigan to spend. And now, the 21 million or 21.5 million deal, then we get 18.5 18 from that, uh, at least that's, we get more than his value, so uh, that's always good, especially as he's almost 29 now, getting to that latter stage of his career, unfortunately, uh, you have to get rid of Torres, he's one of my favorite players, but like I said, unfortunately, you have to get rid of him, but now, we were on the search for a new striker, with one of our strikers left, so it was a kind of a debate. I took a while, um, but I think I knew who I wanted to get because I was checking him earlier, so I didn't really have to go check the potentials again. I knew who I wanted. Uh, it was just a matter of seeing, like, uh, just summing up all the options. And here, we've got to see who is available. Some players, obviously, they asked for too much. 23 million. We need to get someone in that bracket. As you can see, there's real superstars that are not really in our price bracket right now. Uh, Stefan Jovetic, he's a very good player. Um, I was thinking about him, but I don't know. Some, there was some reason I cannot remember why I didn't go for him. Aguero, he's a fantastic striker in the game. Like I saw, Jovetic, he's very good as well. Marco Royce, uh, but then I did something else. I, put, I think I put the maximum worth, yeah, up to 20 million. Then that shortened down a bit more and took out really the real expensive players out like Aguero and Royce, those kind of more... Uh, really good strikers that cost uh, more than the cash we have right now. As you can see, Javier Hernandez, uh, Leandro Jamal, Sturridge. Obviously, he won't come to us. Even uh, That's a stupid thing about the game. We could actually probably sign him. Um, anyway, Lucina Traore. He's the man. We can sign him for $16 million, which is a good deal, I think. He has potential of 86. And look at those attributes right there. With potential of 86, imagine how, how much those attributes will increase, like how they'll look when he gets to 86. His strength will probably be 99 if that increases. If not, the other things will increase. But then, um, there's some couple of other good strikers there. As you know, Mo uh, Muriel, I think he has potential of like 86 or something like that. I can't remember correctly. Uh, Lorenzo Insigne, doing very good for me on Ultimate's team. So, I was thinking about him, but I didn't go with him. As you see, I'm just looking through all of them, but I will... Uh, go with the guy I showed before, um, Lucina Traore, this, probably the tallest striker in the game, the most strong striker at least as well. Uh, tall and strong and doesn't have bad pace for his height, really. Um, he has like sprint speed in the 70s, so that's pretty good. Uh, and then we're kind of going down here. Uh, Paolo Diabella, he's probably the best young striker, in my opinion. Grows good if you play him as a center forward. Um, center forwards aren't bad uh, compared to a striker. They're probably better at passing and stuff like that. So here is Lucina Traore. I'm surprised their team didn't want more than 16 million. They just accept. When it says it looks like this deal can happen, you don't have to offer more than his value. If you offer his value, they'll accept that. So that's a little tip from me. So you don't need to offer more than that. Well, I'm sure experienced people in career mode would know that already. But if you didn't, uh, that's a good tip from me. Um, yeah, that seems to work. When it says this deal can happen, uh, you don't need to offer more than his value. So uh, that's a really good thing if you do that. But next up, we've got a cup match against Man City in the FA Cup. I really want to win that 
because FA Cup very important. See, they accept that for 16 million, uh, which I think is a really good deal in my opinion, considering what he grows into. But you see, very something bad that happens to him straight away as he comes to the team. Very unfortunate for us, but uh, it's something you have to handle. And yes, you guessed right, it is an injury. As soon as he comes to the team, I think it's in the first match. So that was very unfortunate. So, so we had really one less striker. So, uh, but really, we had Al Sharari, we had Neymar. And really, we can play Hazard striker if we really need to. So we had the depth right there, but you really, uh, that was unfortunate. We really needed that other strike, in my opinion, for the balance of the team. Here, contract accepted. Then we're going to get Lasina Traore to the team. And he actually, by the end of the season, I thought he would have decreased in his attributes. But at the end of the season, he actually grows by overall but when being injured. So that's interesting. Uh, Ross Turnbull, going to sell him because really, uh, he's not good enough for the team. And really, you only need one goalkeeper that's really good and the rest you sell. Just uh, In my opinion, I have one good goalkeeper and then I just get one future prospect because they really ever get in, they never get injured and they never run out of fitness. So uh, that's really good. So Lucina Traore, going to get him off the bench in the first game or something like that. Just going to put him in the reserves for now. Because we still have Neymar. And we got Bar as well. So we still have good options for strikers. But I like playing El Sharari as that left winger. And he can really play striker if need be. So I suppose it's not too bad when Traore gets injured. And by the results of the season, it wasn't too bad. So uh, yeah, that was good. Um, so yeah, this video is pretty long. So leave comments if you enjoy it. Like going through the whole January. I thought it's a bit interesting. But if you think it's too long... But this is obviously a rare video. I don't have too much videos over 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, just leave your comments if you like me simulating through the whole January transfer period. And yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, we got Varane. His energy is so depleted right now because uh, I've been playing in him heaps. And he increased so good. In my opinion, he's the best young defender in the game. As you'll see, I'm going to try and keep him. I'm going to try and decline all offers I get for him. Because I really want to see how much he can get to being at my team. Playing him every single match. Or apart from matches like this when he is very low on fitness. And another reason for this series. Because I know I always say I really want to focus on how I build my teams. And this is the best way. Because I always start with buying young players. And I get a lot. Or not a lot. Some people saying my team is bad. Like in my Newcastle one. Uh, people think my team is crap because I sign low overall players. But this one, I can show you how exactly I can make my team good. Al Sharari, Neymar. Obviously, I probably wouldn't have had the funds. But especially with other players that I sign cheaper, then they grow. Then I make money. And really, when I'm like four or five seasons in, I have like the beast teams that uh, you could possibly have. That's why I really want to do a career like this so I can actually get through it to actually be in five seasons. Um, like it, like right now, or not right now, probably in a couple of weeks, because, yeah, I don't want to wait to the end of FIFA 13, and I probably won't even reach that, like even my Newcastle career, which I just made a video, um, not too long ago, I want to do that more as well, and I know a couple of people say it's too much, but for me it's not, I can do it, uh, because last time I said, someone said I didn't make enough videos, so yeah, uh, or I didn't make videos enough, so, yep, look at this happening now. i got, like, all these careers going on. Uh, heaps of videos, like, every day, at least one, sometimes two, sometimes even three in that 24-hour period. So, uh, yeah, people can't say that now. So, i got that base covered. got every base covered now, I think. we got Ultimate Team. People ask Ultimate Team. So, um, what else is there for people to com complain about? Let's see. Anyway, this FA Cup, it came a draw. So, uh, you got to see uh, what we happen in the next round, but... A uh, very good result against Man City. Man City is always hard to beat, so a draw is pretty good, I suppose. Then we have rescheduled match, obviously. And there you go, Lucina Traore, injured for five months, like I said he was going to be. Um, obviously, I didn't say how long, but there it is. Injured for five months, basically for the rest of the season. I think he comes back ready for the last game of the season, but I don't risk him. I uh, just gave him a rest until next season. Then he comes out firing next season, scoring regularly for us showing he eventually was a good signing. So hopefully you enjoy these um, a different series right here. And like I said before, I know I get some people saying it's too much series, but I enjoy making career mode videos. And a lot of them, I've, I've, every career I'm making, I've played them all a season, like past a season that I'm already doing. So I, it's just a matter of making the videos, which is 
right now I'm used to how I do it so I know how to do it like you know, pretty good so I can make like a couple videos a day now uh, for at least the next month or so so you'll be seeing heaps and hopefully I'll get a good amount of viewers and that's basically why because I know I basically get viewers from they like the team so I just want to do a few so I get more, a bit more viewers so uh, hopefully that'll be good for me and good for people watching and yeah just leave a like it really helps a lot and I'll keep making these videos every single day so yeah thanks